One of the biggest frustrations of writing your physics IA is writing the introduction. And the reason behind that is because the examiners in the past or teachers in the past have given us the wrong ideas of what it should include. There's this idea of personal engagement. And in the past, we've kind of been told that there should be a real world example. You should say personally why you're investigating your research question. And that should be put in the introduction. But actually, recently, examiners have told us the exact opposite. So it's really difficult for us to gauge how the perfect introduction for your IA should be written. So that's what this video is about today. And the biggest thing I'd like to say is if you've not started your write up yet, leave your introduction to the end. It's the last thing you should write after you've finished everything else. So what are we going to learn today? Well, we're going to learn five, six different points. The first thing you're going to learn is how your IB Physics IA introduction will help you improve your personal engagement mark. The second thing we're going to learn is things that annoy the examiner so you won't put them in your physics IE introduction. The third thing is a secret from the IB examiners, how to just automatically get one out of two for your personal engagement and do no, no further work. The fourth thing is we'll walk through a five-step blueprint on exactly how to write the perfect IE introduction. And that's the important part of this video, so hang on for that. The fifth thing we'll look at is three excellent examples and then the sixth thing we'll look at is three terrible examples. Okay, so by the end of this video, you should have a very clear idea on how to write a clear, concise introduction that will help you towards that um, two out of two for your personal engagement. Now, when I talk about personal engagement, there are two marks awarded for personal engagement out of 24 for your inside your physics IA. That means personal engagement is worth 8.3% of your IA grade. But more widely, that means it one, makes up 1 1.7% of your final IB physics grade. So it is worth watching to the end of this video and getting your introduction right, because I am going to show you exactly how to write your introduction in five easy steps, and it's the perfect introduction. To get two out of two for personal engagement, it's not all about introduction, but it does help set the scene. So to get two out of two, you have to make the investigation your own. You have to engage with the exploration of your research question and show evidence of personal significance, independent thinking, creativity or initiative in designing and implementing the presentation of the investigation. Whew. What does that mean? Well, it means you've got to show you were there and show you cared. Okay, And your introduction is a really good way of setting the scene for your examiner and proving that there's an immediate and positive impression of you, okay? I promised you I'd tell you some things that annoy physics examiners. And the biggest thing that annoys physics examiners in your introduction, and I'll read from their, their um, report actually, so I'm gonna look at my screen. Um, Artificial comments of interest do not impress the examiners. Wanting to become an electrical engineer does not earn the student level two with a traditional lab that confirms Ohm's law. Personal engagement is assessed holistically, not in a section or paragraph with the heading personal engagement. Okay, so don't say you want to become an electrical engineer and then do a really simple investigation on Ohm's law. The examiners are too clever for that. And please, please, please do not write the title personal engagement and write why you want to do the investigation. That's dreadful as well. Okay, so that just annoys them. Let's steer clear of that and let's see what the secret behind just getting one out of two automatically without doing anything else. So the examiners have said, if you perform an investigation, gather and process data, then you automatically achieve level one. So even if you don't even write an introduction, you can still achieve level one if you perform an investigation, gather and process the data. But the point of this video is how would you write the introduction in your physics IA to get two out of two, to get that full marks for your personal engagement. The five step blueprint for writing your perfect physics AI introduction. And step one is to clearly state the research question. You'll know that when you're doing your IA, your research question will be, how does variable X affect variable Y? So for my example, here I'm going to say how does the angle of incidence of direct sunlight 
affect the power output of a photovoltaic cell. Okay, so the step one of writing this introduction is this investigation seeks to determine how the angle of instance of direct sunlight affects the power output of a photovoltaic cell. Simple enough, right? Step number two is to provide a brief overview of the investigation. And it should be in two sentences, no more of that. So if you look on the screen, you'll see that I've left the first sentence here. The text in bold is addition to what I've already written. And my brief summary of the investigation or my brief overview of the investigation is, the investigation used a solar simulator to measure the output at different angles of instance, the results showed a decrease in power output as the angle of instance increased due to less intense and less effectively absorbed light and increased reflection off the cell surface. So I've said what I did in one sentence and what the results were in one sentence. Now it's getting a bit wordy, but I'm not too worried about that at the moment. I'm going to move on to step three. Step three is explain why the research question is important. Now this is where you touch this is where you take your research question and just relate it to the outer world a bit, okay? Nothing too lengthy. Um, again, if you look at the screen, I've put in bold how I've added on to my, my introduction here. So I've said, photovoltaic cells have the potential to provide a significant contribution to the global energy mix and optimising their performance is of great importance. By increasing the efficiency of photovoltaic cells, the overall cost of photovoltaic systems can be reduced, which can make these systems more accessible and encourage their adoption. Photovoltaic systems are also a sustainable source of energy as they do not produce, green, produce greenhouse gases or other harmful emissions. So I've taken my idea of how to improve the power output of a cell and I've related it to the efficiency of the cell and why that's good for the real world. Now, I think there's too many words here, but we'll deal with that in a minute. Let's move on to step four. Step four is to show your personal engagement. Now, we don't go overboard here either. You don't say you're fascinated. You don't describe your holidays as a child. You don't go overboard about this. Um, you really want to sort of sound quite professional, quite motivated. And you can see on the screen below, I've said, as a student who has always been interested in how we can harness the energy from the sun in a more sustainable way, I was eager to explore the physics behind the efficiency of photovoltaic cells in an experimental way. So it's saying, look, I'm engaged with the world, I'm engaged with physics, and this is how I intend to combine the two. Now, I think that's a great introduction so far, but it is a five-step programme, and the fifth step is to be clear and concise. So I've taken that introduction that I wrote previously and I've just really condensed it down into 100 words. I feel that your introduction should always be less than 150 words, okay? If it's more than 150 words, I think you're waffling and I think you're taking up too much space with it. I'd like to show you, um, I would like to show you three examples of a research question and I would like to show you a good example of that introduction and a bad example of that introduction. So the first research question we're going to look at is, how does the length of a bridge affect the sag of a bridge when a constant mass is applied to the centre of the bridge? Now, I'm not going to read out these introductions. I want you to press pause on the video now, read through the introduction, which is a good example, read through why I've given it all the ticks at the bottom, and then you're going to move on to the bad example for this research question. And you can see the bad example on the screen now. Press pause, read through the bad example, and read why I think it's terrible. <laughs> Here we are with another research question. Press pause. Do you now understand why I think this is a good example? Have you read the introduction? Have you read all the points why I believe it to be a good one? Let's move on to a bad example. A bad example of how does the strength of a magnetic field affect the period of oscillation of a pendulum? Press pause, read through the introduction, and and read why I've given those crosses. One final good example in this research question is how does the mass of a toy parachute affect the thermal velocity of the parachute in free fall? This is a good example here. Press pause, read through it and see why I've given it all the ticks. Here we are in a bad example. 
press pause, read through it, and see why I've given it so many terrible crosses. Hopefully you can see that it's very easy to write the perfect introduction to your physics IA. There's a five-step plan that you can easily follow, and I suggest you do that. I suggest the, the uh, days are gone where we waffle on about our holidays or we waffle on about our hobbies. I think it doesn't show you to be a professional, academically interested student. I think the five-step plan that I've out, laid out here does show you to be that person. I think the five-step plan that I've laid out here does show you to be that person. And I highly recommend you follow my steps. I hope you find this useful and have a great day. Bye.